honestly, I'm unboxing this for the first time. It looks like I've unboxed it, but uh, yeah, I think Ace Ventura delivered it. All right, guys, I, I hate to say this, but ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. So, guys, I got to tell you, I little current event situation for you. So this obviously won't be relevant the longer this video stays on YouTube, but here's a quick little update for you. We up here in British Columbia, Canada are going through an absolute boomer of a heat wave. I mean like hotter than a snake's ass in a wagon rut. It is beyond belief. And just for justification, for any of you that live in hotter climates that are watching this and you don't believe me what type of temps we're dealing with, I'll put some screenshots up here for you. We hit 125 degrees the other day in my backyard in the shade, like smoking. And for the Canadian folks out there, or I guess, uh, where else do we deal with metric? Europe, a lot of Europe does, like 51.3 degrees centigrade. It was just nuts. So if you guys hear, I got a fan, I don't have any vents in my garage, so I got a fan blowing cold air from my house, which super grateful we got air conditioning, so I try to blow cold air in here. It doesn't, it knocks it down a little bit, but it doesn't, you know, really cool it down all that much. So it's smoking hot. Anyway, if you hear a fan blowing in the background in some of my uh, clips here today, just bear with me. Um, it's crazy hot in here. So. Uh, okay, I thought I'd start off with a little update for you guys. I've been painting like crazy. Um, okay, current situation you see down below here. Fresh coat of Scarlet Red on the center console and my new cup holder console. Um, you guys are probably, I did a short little video. It was actually an old clip on the center console. These are the LMR center consoles without the power plugs in them. And the reason I go that route is because I put a wireless charger underneath them. I'll put a link to that video up here for you. Anyway, um, I did, uh, it was an old clip I found of me doing that one, but they send you a um, emergency brake boot that you've got to install yourself. And I think the way LMR tells you to do it is with a soldering iron, which is, I guess it kind of accomplished the task, but I don't think it does that good a job because you want to try to squash the plastic nub that they give you and make it like super tight. So what I do is I use a bolt uh, in a set of vice grips and a blowtorch and I uh, get the bolt real hot and kind of melt the plastic down and it creates like a flat stop. I hold the boot down and the there's like a, a plastic, I don't know, a gasket maybe if you will, that you put on the nubs after the rubber um, boot and that kind of holds everything in place and then you you burn those little nubs down anyway um, I'll put a link to that little video for you guys if uh, any of you are sitting there wondering how to do this and make your emergency brake boot nice and tight on your uh, LMR or you know it, there's a few different versions of this cup holder console situation out there but um, okay so that's that about that now the interior oh shoot Sorry guys, I got my kind of storing stuff. I took the, the coop out today and, well, the coop's been a storage bench for me. So I threw all the stuff off of that into here. Um, you know what, bear with me. Let me pull this stuff out and I'll bring you guys right back here. Hold tight, boom. Okay, magic of uh, video. Okay, so here's a quick little status update on the interior of the convertible. So carpet's back in. Um, by now you guys have probably seen the video of me finishing this uh, this carpet or tuning it up, if you will. It turned out quite well, I think, uh, especially for how bad it was. I've put my door panels back on. I got some new switches, power windows and lock switches. Um, I got new upper um, armrests. The other ones were shot. These are the uh, stock speaker. Uh, covers for the back of the convertible. I've just painted them. They were pretty tired too. So anyway, they look a lot better. Clean the back seat, um, clean the front seats. You guys have probably seen that video too. Did a rest of one of those seats. And yeah, it's starting to come together. So um, in order to keep this uh, journey moving in the right direction, 
I mentioned in my parts haul video that I've got, well, some hard parts to install here. So, uh, clutch cable, quadrant, adjuster, and I've got a short throw shifter. This is, um, I've actually never used this short throw shifter. The one I've got in my coupe is a B&M, and this is actually just like late model resto's econo short throw shifter. And I just, I wanted something a little bit shorter than what the stock one is, right? This thing, I just, the couple times I've drove the car, it just feels like you're driving an old farm truck, you know, you're shifting great big gears, throwing big gears. So I'm gonna throw this short throw shifter on, but here's the cool part about it. Um, I've never done this one and they're all a little different. They're all based off the same theory, but uh, I thought I'd drag you guys along with me while we uh, install this short throw for any of you out there that are looking to do that to your car and wondering how the heck you go about doing that. Now, I've got the added benefit. Well, I already showed you the center consoles out of the car. So I got lots of room to work with, but fear not because when I put mine in my coupe, uh, my center console was in, you're a little goofier trying to get the the four bolts out that hold the um, the rubber boot that essentially it's it's a sound detonator and kind of a dust stopper but uh, there's four um, they're a threaded almost like a screw but a, I'll call them bolts that hold that on you got to pop that off but you can get those off um, with the center console in so um, anyway the other side of it, I guess, is if you want to pull your center console out, you got lots of room to work and you probably got all kinds of junk and dust and dirt laying underneath there. So if you're OCD like me and you want to clean up underneath your console, now's a good time to do it. Anyway, guys, stand by. I'll get you in the car here with me and we'll, uh, we'll throw this short throw shifter in. Right. So before we get to installing this, guys, let's unbox it and see what we're dealing with. No, I, honestly, I'm unboxing this for the first time. It looks like I've unboxed it, but... Uh, yeah, I think Ace Van Shura delivered it. Um, the box is beat. Anyway, so here is, I guess, the magic of the whole short throw shifter. Um, I should mention, guys, so yeah, this was, um, now they're not paying me to say this, although I wish they were. Um, I bought this from LMR, and LMR has been good to me over the years in that probably the same as they have to you guys though in that they're uh they typically have things in stock they're really quick at shipping if you ever have any issues they're really good at uh at, at handling them so um they are not paying me to say this but this is where i got it from so here's the body of the short throw shifter and yeah the total cost on this short throw shifter i think was 69 bucks so yeah there's that looks like a good piece um, especially for 69 bucks. This looks like, yeah, these are going to be the four bolts that, um, hold the shifter down to the transmission. And then they must, these springs, oh, they give you two sets of springs. Must be a lighter load and a, and a taller load or a heavier load. I don't know if you guys can see in there, but that's like the, um, the side load spring for uh, you know forcing yourself over into the to the other gears so that's kind of neat and then well here's the top of your uh, shifter and or the angle to, sh to angle your uh, shift handle back so cool pretty simple pretty straightforward and then the hardware to bolt your uh, your handle on so the only thing that uh, well Unless, again, Ace Ventura that delivered this lost it. But the only thing that I don't have in here that you're going to have to be aware you're going to need is some gasket maker because you're going to have to uh, gasket this guy down to your transmission and seal it. Um, transmission being full of ATF or some guys run uh, straight up motor oil. Um, but anyway, you don't want your, uh, your transmission leaking oil out and around by your uh, your shifter so okay guys we'll get you in the car here and we'll start peeling the old one out all right guys how's this for a view i'm gonna muck up my windshield with my uh gopro suction cup system so you guys can get the best seat in the house here so uh yeah threw my passenger seat in to get this 
this uh, make it a little more comfortable in here while I'm taking this apart. But anyway, first things first. Um, well, let's take the let's take this guy off here first. So these you got two bolts on this side of your shifter driver side, and they're a 10 mil. So go ahead and loosen those guys off. Holy dinah, somebody tighten those on there good. Might have to bust out the big guns. Okay, so that's that. We'll put him out of the way. And then you need yourself an 8 mil. Well, at least it is in my case. Sometimes these um, these screws can can get changed over over time if somebody's had them out of your car. But uh, I think this is a pretty good uh, specimen for an original car, right? This thing's still running the original shifter, so and these are an eight mil. Okay, and that gets our boot out. So there's our top end of our T5 and our stock shifter. I'm just going to set this on the floor. It needs to be vacuumed. Okay, and now these guys look to be, I think they're a 13 mil. Yep. And I'm going to need a 13 mil wrench to get underneath at those ones. Stand by, grab a wrench. Alright guys, sorry I cut that off because uh, I didn't want to bore you to death watching me do little quarter turns on these bolts, but from your vantage view right now, you could probably recognize that you can only see two of these bolts. And the reason is, the other two are here and here. Now, I've loosened them. And the way that the transmission sits in here, it's tilted ever so slightly to the driver's side. Now, I'll show you here. I can just, just barely get the driver's side front bolt out. Passenger side? <laughs> Not happening. <coughs> Pardon me. So, I'm going to get in here with, well, actually, ooh, it's crazy tight. You know what? I might be able to do this with just a, I had this 14 mil wrench to kind of give me a little leverage on some of these. I might be able to pry up a little bit here and get this guy out. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. So, just a little pry job on these front two and I got it out. When I first seen this, I thought to myself, oh no, I'm gonna have to cut this out. But anyway, I didn't, so. So this shifter, it's got a, a bit of a ledge underneath it. It hangs ever so slightly over the top of the transmission. So you can get in here with a little bit of a, a screwdriver if you've got an angled flat bar or something and just kind of pop that loose because this whole um, shift mechanism is RTV'd on here. So uh, it's going to be a little bit of a pop to get that uh, that gasket loose. But anyway, hang tight. I'm just going to grab myself a pry bar here and we'll get this off. All right, guys, I, I hate to say this, but this is the reality of what you got to deal with sometimes. I can't seem to get this um, stock shifter loose from the top side. I mean, I could if I wanted to really bang up this 
uh, transmission cover um, hump, but I don't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jack the car up and roll underneath and just tap on this from the bottom side. Like I was saying, there's a, a bit of a ledge that overhangs, like the shifter is larger than uh, how it mounts to the T5. So I'm just going to get under there and tap on it and break it loose that way. So stand by, we'll get this guy loose. This is, <laughs> my coupe wasn't this hard um, and other cars that I've done in the past haven't been this hard, but sometimes this is the reality of, of what you got to deal with, right? You run into unforeseen circumstances and you got to think on your toes. So I'll get the car up in the air and I'll uh, bust this guy loose and then we'll get back to installing this shifter. Alright guys, so I'm just going to roll under the car here and give this guy a little tap from the bottom side. Loose now. There we go. So, like I said, I mean, I, I don't know. I just have already kind of tweaked this down. I'm gonna have to take some channel lock pliers and bend that back straight. Um, I just want to try to keep this car. It's in such great shape. I don't want to mess it up or anything, right? So, um, try to keep it in the the shape that I got it in and or make it better. But anyway, yeah, for the, whatever it took me, three minutes to jack my car up and put it on jack stands, roll under it and give it a couple taps, you saw how quick and easy that popped, right? So, uh, there it goes. And there's your stock shifter. Kind of lucked out too. Looks like most of the silicone stayed on the shifter and not on my uh, transmission. So I'll just get something to clean this up with, guys. We'll take like a a flat blade, uh, like a scraper, gasket scraper to it, and clean that off. We'll lay down some new RTV and we'll drop this new guy on. So stand by while I clean this up. All right, guys. So yeah, just you know, do your best to well. Ideally, you keep everything out of the body of the transmission, but just take this old stuff off. So just take your time. It's not a race. I mean, unless you go to race to get to, but uh, take your time. Get all the old gasket. RTV off of there. Take yourself some brake clean and just wipe the surface clean. So you got a nice clean, dry, oil free surface to put your new RTV on. I should also mention too while you've got your shifter off, inspect this plastic, um, well, bushing really is what it is. Um, so this is what your shifter, the bottom end of it actually sits in that, uh, that joint or that, I guess you almost, it's a ball socket really. And I mean, I don't have a replacement, but this one looks pretty good and I'm going to reuse it, but these can get beat up, broken, cracked, whatever. So maybe be aware of that if you're watching this video before you go and purchase a, a short throw shifter wouldn't be a bad little insurance policy to buy a, a replacement one of these but in this case I'm just going to be inspecting mine so anyway give it a good cleaning 
where you're gonna have your your new gasket and we'll drop the new one on right so RTV time I'm gonna be uh, laying a thin layer around here okay I mean yeah I don't know how to explain thin to you but maybe just follow along here and I'll show you what I'm talking about yeah just lay a nice little bead in there just a nice thin coat try not to get any inside there I mean when you go to suck this thing down a little of it's gonna go over but okay so then you're ready to drop on your new in this case Econo shifter so I think what I'll do here is I'll start my back to Just so then my, I've got some reference because I can't really see the holes underneath here. I can see this one not bad, but this one's a little tougher to see. And then I get my 21 mil. Actually, wait, I'll see if I can sneak this guy in here. Yeah, that one's going to fall in no problem. It's this other one here that I'm going to have trouble with. So. I'm going to pry up and see if I can drop this guy in there. Nice. Okay, it went. No. Getting the thread started is going to be another story. Right, so we're all tightened down. Um, and uh, sorry guys, I, I mean, I, I would have showed you that, but it, it, especially these two bolts, it was just a ridiculous amount of quarter turns. So I uh, didn't want to bore you to death. Anyway, next step is the dust boot. Or so I thought. So I figured I was going to actually have to cut this out, which now that I think about it, a person could and seal down underneath here. But the reality of it is I don't think you do. This is going to sit on there quite nicely and seal all of that stuff underneath it. So I don't think I'm going to bother cutting this at all. So the next step would be I've got to adjust these stops um, and now to do that I went ahead and I put the top half of my shifter together um, yeah. now I guess as I say that I, I realized that I was a little misleading earlier so I thought that these bolts were gonna be for bolting this down but as it turns out they're not they're for bolting your uh, shifter shaft together so uh, these little guys I don't know what the heck I mean they look a lot like these bolts and they do give you a whole nother set of springs so I don't know maybe with that new set of springs you need longer bolts so anyway sorry about that my bad um, I thought these bolted your shifter together but they don't you use these guys so anyway uh, here's what we're gonna do I'm gonna set this guy on here and just ever so nicely tighten them up. Um, this isn't going to be permanent. Oh, it looks like you get a high and a low spot here. You could drop this down a level and be a little bit shorter, which I may very well do. I like a short shifter. I guess it may come into contact with the back of the, or the beauty plate 
that the console sits in. But anyway, I can worry about moving that after. Um, I will, just like I did these ones, I threw some blue Loctite on them. So, uh, anyway, I don't know if you need to or not, but I did. So, for now, we can just run these guys in here. So we got a little bit more leverage on the shifter. I think these are a uh, six mil hex or Allen key. So now we're shifting. So here's three, here's four. Now what you want to do with these or at least I guess I should say what I do is you don't really want to overthink setting these. Um, now you obviously want to think about it, but don't go crazy with them. The, the biggest thing is, um, especially if you're not really out there beating on your car, uh, which this car definitely will not be one of those cars. Um, you just want to set them so that they slow this well they stop the shifter before you're like you know if you're really hard on it you're, you're not gonna essentially pound it right through there so for example like that would get that one there um now I, i'm not sure if you guys can see that all that well but um essentially you just you get it in gear and you bump this up against it and then from there you tighten your nut onto it. So for example, this guy, back this nut off a bit, we'll go up to three. And again, I'll just run this guy in so that it bumps up against it, bumps up against the shifter, and then I'll tighten the nut down. So really especially for uh, an economy piece like this I mean anyone that's racing a car is is definitely not going to be buying this economy shifter this is more or less just to bring your your gear shift knob down a little bit from the the stock format it, it's definitely a nicer piece than the stock one but yeah just I don't overthink these especially for the type of driving that I do if you were racing, you'd definitely be buying a better shifter and have a better transmission, the whole nine yards, and you would probably be a little bit more concerned with how tight the tolerances are for these. But for my application, I just get them so that, there, that one is, no. I can no longer turn that one anymore. It's fully in gear, and I've got a nice replaceable stopper that will not allow me to go any or to yard on it any further if I was really rough with it than it should be. So that's how you set those guys. And then yeah, from there, these are a an eight or pardon me, 19 mil. So get your uh, get yourself on. on your hex, hold it, and just tighten her down. That guy is set. This one will just hold him tight. Check it one last time. Yep. First and second look, or pardon me, second and fourth look good. Again, I'll just Hold this. And tighten my nut down. And there you have it. Your shifter is set. Okay guys, so we're all adjusted. That pretty much does it. Um, now, 
I'm actually going to call this good right about here. Um, I'm going to put these, just leave it at uh, kind of dust cover stages. And the reason being is um, it's going to make it a little easier to get my, get my console in here, dropping bolts. Um, I'll get my console in and then I'll lock tight this guy in. And actually, because there's essentially, there's a, a, a high setting and then there's a little bit lower setting here too that you can run it at. I don't know if that low setting is going to bump into my console, but ideally I wouldn't mind being on the lower setting. I, I like a, a low shifter. So I'm going to leave this kind of at this stage. So, um, but I think that gives you a pretty good idea how to install one of these economy shifters. All right, guys. So, um, overall pretty easy install, right? Um, you saw, I guess the, the ins and outs of, um, what you think might be super easy kind of ends up being a little bit of a pain. Sometimes I still got the car up in the air. Um, you know, you got to roll under and you got to think on your toes and, I don't know, anytime you, you think the job's gonna be super easy, which I did think that going into this. I remember doing the, the B&M shifter in my coupe years ago. And heck, I was in and out of the my mom's driveway in under an hour. This was a little over an hour. <laughs> well, about an hour and a half. Anyway, uh, filming and stuff too, but um, yeah. So obviously I haven't driven the car with it, but it feels very, solid and positive um heck for 69 bucks i don't think you can go wrong and for those of you that have been following along you know that this car is what's well, going to be my mom's and well she might bang a couple gears in it but you know she's not going to be drag racing and whatever so this is more just a, a nice way of shortening up that shifter and making it a little bit more short throw and and positive feeling so these stock shifters I, I forgot how awful they were i mean not awful but it's just it's a big shifter it's it's just yeah the, the short throws is where it's at so yeah um any questions and comments be, by all means hit me up i will i'll maybe try and do a follow-up once i've driven the car i've still got to get the clutch cable and all that good stuff in it but you know what the fact that i had to jack the car up that works out pretty good because uh i'm gonna roll under there and, and start on that right now so i'll see you guys on that video anyway guys look forward to chatting with you in the comments and as always thanks for watching take care bye for now